Ukraine, a country of over 603,000 square kilometers and over 40 million inhabitants, a country at war, fighting for its existence with an active front line of over 1,000 kilometers in length. With Moscow importing new weapons from Iran and North Korea, starting production of Shahid drones inside Russia and increasing the production capacity of almost all types of missiles, the country is expected to be raising its production from 100 to over 200 strike systems per month in 2024. The threat for Ukraine's skies and people grows larger by the day. Between December 29th and January 2nd alone, Ukraine was attacked by at least 500 missiles and UAVs. The point is, Ukraine needs more than just tight air defense to protect this massive country and its people. Ukraine requires an air shield. So, welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week it's about Ukraine's battle for the skies and the question what it would take to implement such an air shield. Air defense cannot be viewed as something static or rigid. It requires constant maintenance, fine-tuning and upgrades. You need to constantly rotate and move things around to make sure the enemy never finds out where your air defense systems are stationed. It needs to be able to adapt to various threats, ranging from small targets such as attack UAVs to larger slowing moving targets such as helicopters and faster, ultra-modern fighter jets or even highly advanced missiles. An effective air shield has many layers. In an ideal scenario, all these systems somehow communicate and interact with each other. Each system has a designated dome of responsibility and some air defense systems are necessary to protect others. The shield must reach from the zero line, the very first trench, where no soldier can advance as long as enemy aircraft are patrolling, all the way to the backlands where the economy is kept alive. Bridges, power plants, factories, rivers, seaports. But in fact, it all starts on enemy territory. The most fundamental part is intelligence, information that tells you what capabilities do the enemy have, what can they fire, when and how. According to this information, you have to react and set up your shields. But the best you can do is engage the enemy before he launches an attack. On the night of the 15th of January, the Ukrainian Air Force successfully engaged a Russian A-50 early warning and control jet and an IL-22M radio relay aircraft over the Sea of Azov. Both are highly valuable targets. There are only around 12 IL-22s and only around 9 A-50s in existence. Only half of them are operational at a given time. One A-50 costs an estimated 330 million US dollars. They can fly at high altitudes and provide deep insight into Ukrainian territory. They can detect incoming missiles and drones and also spot enemy fighter jets. It's a huge loss for Russia. It's not confirmed, but there is a rumor that a Patriot air defense system is responsible for the downing of this plane. It's possible since Robotine, the closest point of Ukrainian controlled territory, is only around 85 kilometers from the Sea of Azov, putting it theoretically in range of the system. It wouldn't be the first time. A Patriot allegedly downed three Russian Su-34s in 2023. Placing high-range air defense systems close to the front line or border is a high-risk undertaking, but can also yield a high reward. The powerful radar also has powerful emissions that can be detected and geolocated by Russian signals intelligence systems like those aboard Russian spy planes. The irony is that if a Patriot battery was responsible for engaging the two Russian planes, they very likely saw it coming. In very simple terms, air defense systems are split into three main categories, short range, medium and long range. Short range systems can be shoulder portable man pads or maneuverable ground based systems like the Avenger. Their range is typically just a few kilometers. Medium range systems like the Iris-T, which fires a heat seeking missile with the same name, has a range of around 32 kilometers. Long range systems include the famous Patriot, which can track an object at over 100 kilometers and up to altitudes of over 24 kilometers, depending on the missile use. So you can imagine a kind of bell around the position, the area of potential engagement. But the system is smart and will typically wait to engage a target until it has the highest probability of kill. That's typically somewhere between 5 to 25 kilometers. So, how many systems would it take to create a solid air shield? It's hard to put something like this in numbers. President Zelensky once said it would take at least 50 Patriot batteries to close the skies. It's an incredibly advanced system with only a couple of downsides. The first is that it takes around 90 trained personnel to operate. The second is the cost, with a battery costing around 1 billion US dollars. But in this war, ammunition runs out fast, and the Pac-3 MSE, the only missile that the United States is currently procuring for the Patriot system, costs around 4.1 million US dollars apiece. When it comes to shooting down an airplane or a missile that is headed for a city, the cost-benefit calculation works in Ukraine's favor. But for other threats, alternative systems like the Iris T, the Older Hawk, or even the highly advanced Skynex are much cheaper in comparison and therefore indispensable. 
In January, the Franklin Sam air defense system was used for the first time in combat in Ukraine. It shot down a Shahid drone from a distance of nine kilometers. By the way, we have done more detailed episodes about those systems before. You can check them out on our channel. Now, we have talked about intelligence and information about air defense systems. Another decisive factor is fighter jets. Training for Ukrainian pilots on F-16s is underway. According to Brigadier General Sergei Kholtsov, Chief of Aircraft of the Air Force Command of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Ukraine needs at least three or four squadrons, 12 to 16 units each of F-16 fighter jets, to gain air superiority in just certain sectors of the front line. Never forget that with each single plane comes a huge logistical effort in terms of maintenance, repair, and resupply of ammunition. But at the end of the day, there is no other choice. Russia is continuously developing new methods and new weapons. Weapons which kill innocent civilians in their sleep, weapons that destroy hospitals, homes, and lives. The only way to stop that is to commit to building an air shield, one that protects Ukraine and its people, all the way from north to south and from east to west. That's it for Talking Tactics this week. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe and see you next week.